Hey everyone, welcome to part 82 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll create a shop UI like this, where we can list all the items that the player can buy. So let's look at how to create this. You can support the making of this series by becoming a Patreon and get some cool rewards for it, like access to the complete project files of the series, exclusive tutorials that are not covered on YouTube, and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So first, let me create the UI for the shop. So let me open up the UI canvas and let me disable all the UI that are currently active. Okay. So now I'll add a new game object for the shop UI. Let me just name this shop UI and I'll make it stretch in both sides to cover the entire screen. Okay. So next, under the shop UI, I'll add a new image. So this will be the background for the item list. So let me call it item list background. All right. And let me make it bigger. I'll set it switch to something like 400 and height to 500. All right. So this will be placed in the right side of the scene. Okay. So next, I'll set the image to the image of the dialog box. So we'll show all the items in the shop in this box. So next, in the left side of the screen, we need to create a UI to show the details of the item. So under the shop UI, I'll create a new empty object called item details. All right. And under the item details, I'll add a new image. So this will be the background for the item description. So let me call this description background and let me just place it in the right position that looks okay so next i'll also change its image to the image of the dialog box so next under the description background i'll add a new text to show the item description so let me just call this description text. Then I'll make the text stretch in both sides and fill the entire description box. Okay. But I want to add a little bit of padding on all the sides. So I'll set left, right, top and bottom to 20. All right. So next we need to change the font of the text. So I'll change the font to orange kit and change the font size to something like 32. And let me just change the text to some sample text. All right. So now we have the UI to show the description. So next, we should also add an image to show the icon of the item. So under the item details, I'll add a new image called item icon. Okay. Let me just place it over here. And let me just replace the source with the sample image just to see how it looks. All right. So now we have the UI to show the item details. So next, let's create the UI for the item list. So here, we need to show the list of the items in the shop and we should show it in a scroll view so that the user will be able to scroll, right? So the UI for this is going to be pretty similar to what we created in the inventory UI. So let me just disable the shop UI for a second. So yeah, we had already created a UI to list the items in the inventory UI. And here we have handled scrolling and all that. 
So we can just copy and paste this into our shop UI. We don't have to create it from scratch. So we need the item scroll view. And we also need the up arrow and the down arrow. So let me select all that and copy. Okay. So now I'll disable the inventory UI and enable the shop UI. And then I'll paste the copied elements into the item list background. Okay. So it's not a child of item list background right now. So let's drag and drop it to make it a child. All right. So first let's set up the item scroll view. So I want the item scroll view to fill the entire item list background. So let me stretch it on both sides. And I want to give some padding so that it looks good. So I'll set 25 for the left and right padding. And for the top and bottom, we should have some more space. The reason is because we need to show the up and down arrow at the top and bottom. So here I'll give a higher padding like 50 for both top and bottom. All right. So next let's set up the up and down arrow images. So here we can set the X to zero so that it'll be in the exact center. And then let me try changing the Y position. All right, that looks okay. I'll just set it to minus 32. So next we'll do the same for the down arrow. So I'll set the X to zero. And for the Y, I'll put plus 32. All right. So the UI looks okay to me. By the way, one main difference in the item list UI of the shop is that in the case of shop, we don't have to show the count of the item. Instead of that, we can show the price of the item over here, right? So right now, if you look at the item slot UI, it has a text for the name and the count, but we don't want to display the count in this case. So what we can do is we can reuse this count text. We don't have to create a new text for that, but instead of showing the count, we can show the price inside it. Okay. So just keep that in mind. We'll be using the count text to show the price. Everything else is just same as the inventory UI. This is the only difference. So we're done with the UI part. Next, we can go ahead and write the script for the shop UI. So under the scripts, under UI folder, I'll create a new C -sharp script called shop UI. All right, let me just get rid of the default code. So again, this script is going to be pretty similar to the inventory UI script. So I'll be referring to the inventory UI script a lot and I'll copy and paste parts of it. All right. So in the shop UI, first we need to get the reference to all the UI elements like the item list and item description text, icon and all that. Okay. So we need to define serialized field variables for all that. So let's look at how we did that in the inventory UI. So here we have defined a variable for all the UI element. So let's copy and paste that to the shop UI. We don't need the party screen and more selector UI, by the way, that's only needed in the inventory UI. So let me copy the rest to the shop UI script. Okay. So we have errors. That's because we haven't imported the unity engine.ui namespace. So let me do that. Okay. And by the way, in the case of shop UI, we don't need the category text. Here, we are not showing the items as different category, right? We are showing everything together. So we don't need the category text. So let me get rid of that. Okay. So now we have all the references. So next, let me create a public function to show the shop UI. So I'll create a function called show. And this function will take 
the list of items to show in the parameter. All right, I'll call this available items. So this is a list of items that the merchant has. So inside this function, first I'll enable the shop UI game object. So I'll say game object dot set active true. So this will show the shop UI. And then we should show all the available items in our item list, right? So we have already written function for this in the inventory UI. So it's called update item list. It just leads all the existing items and then it'll add a new list of items as child of the item list game object. Okay. So let's also use this function in the shop UI. So let me just copy that and paste it over here. All right. So we have few errors over here. So in the case of the inventory UI, we were looping over the item slots and not the item. The reason is because in the inventory UI, we should also show the count of the item, right? So the count of the item is in the item slot. So that's the reason why we are looping over the item slot. But in the case of shop UI, we don't have to show the count. So we can directly loop through the available items list. We don't have to find the slots. So here in the for each loop, I loop through the available items list directly. Okay, we don't have access to the available items list because it's a parameter. So let me actually store it in a local variable so that we can use it outside the function. All right. And from the show function, I'll assign it to the local variable. So now we should be able to access it from here. And let me just change the name of this variable to item instead of item slot, just to be clear. Okay. So now we have an error inside the set data function because the set data is expecting an item slot, but we are passing an item, right? So if you look at the set data function, it's actually setting the name and the count of the item. So we don't want to set the count. In the case of shop UI, we only want to show the name and the price of the item, right? So here we can't use this function. So let's create a new function called set name and price. So this function will take a reference to the item instead of the item slot. All right. And we should set the name text and count text from this function. So let me just copy these two lines. All right. So to the name text, we can just set the item dot name. And then to the count text, we should actually set the price of the item instead of the count. So let me set item dot price. Okay. And here, I'll put a dollar sign at the start. So this will set the name and the price of the item. And by the way, from this function, we are also caching reference to the rect transform, which we are using to get the height or something. So let me also make sure to do that from the set name and price function. Okay. So now from the shop UI script, we can call set name and price and we can pass the item in the parameter okay so that error is gone so next we have another error over here so we don't have a list for the slot ui so let's just create a list for that and the error should be gone so the list is called slot ui list okay so now that error is gone. So next from the update item list function, we are calling another function called update item selection. So this function is responsible for 
showing the item details like the icon and the description of the item. So we should also copy this function into the shop UI script. So let's go to the inventory UI. So here we have the update item selection function. So it's setting the icon and description. And it's also calling a function to handle the scrolling. So we'll also need this function in the shop UI because we need to handle the item scrolling in shop UI also. Okay, so let me copy these two functions and I'll paste it into the shop UI script. Okay. Again, we have few errors over here. We'll fix them one by one. So once again, in the inventory UI, we were using the item slots because we wanted access to the count of the item, but we don't need that in the shop UI. We can directly use the available items list. So here, instead of slots, I'll use the available items list. Okay. So when using available items, we don't have to call dot item. It will directly return the reference to the item. Right. So those errors are gone. So next, we haven't defined this variable called selected item. So let's just define it over here. All right. So now all the errors should be gone in the update item selection function. So next we need to fix the errors in the handle scrolling function. So here we need to define two variables, items in viewport, which is actually a constant. And then we also need a variable for the rec transform of the item list. So let's just look how it's defined in the inventory UI. So here you can see the items in viewport is a constant. And then we also have a variable for the rec transform of the item. We are actually caching a reference to it from the awake function, right? So let's also define these two variables in the shop UI. Okay. So next, let me also define the item list rect variable and I'll copy the whole awake function. Okay. And we don't need a reference to the inventory from the shop UI. So let me just get rid of the first line. We only need this line. Okay. So now all the errors should be gone. Um, in the shop UI, now we have functions to update the item list, show the item details, and handle scrolling in the item list. Okay, so we have all these functions. So now we just have to use them. So in the show function, after we show the shop UI, we can call the update item list function. So this will show all the available items that was passed in the item list. Okay. So next, we need to handle the code for the item selection. So we just need to update the value of this variable based on the player's input. Okay. So I'll be doing that inside the handle update function. All right. So in this function, if the user pressed the down arrow key, then we'll increment the selected item variable. And otherwise, if the user pressed the up arrow key, then we'll decrement it. Okay. And then I'll clamp the selected item between zero and the available items count. So the upper limit will be available items dot count minus one. 
all right so next if there was a change in the selected item then we should call the update item selection function and change the sprite and the description of the item right so first we need to check if there was a change in the selected item variable so for that i'll cache the selected item into a variable called previous selection and then if the selected item is not equal to the previous selection then that means the selected item changed and we should call the update item selection function to update the selection and the item details okay so this will handle the item selection so now let's show the shop ui from the shop controller script all right so we should show the shop ui if the player selects the buy option right so first let me get a reference to the shop ui from the shop controller so let me define a variable for the shop ui all right and then from the start menu state if the player selected buy first i'll set the state to shop state dot buying and then i'll show the shop ui by calling shop ui dot show okay so to this function we have to pass the available items that the merchant has so we have a reference to the merchant over here and in the merchant script we have to define the list of items that the merchant has so here i'll create a new serialized field variable and this will be a list of items and i'll call it the available items okay let me also create a property to expose it so now we can get the available items from the shop controller so in here let me actually store the merchant in a local variable so that we can access it outside the start writing function so i'll just define it over here okay and let me assign the reference from the start writing function And now when calling shop ui dot show we can pass the available items that the merchant has okay and by the way when showing the shop ui for buying items we can also show the wallet ui so that the user will know how much money they have in their hand all right so now we should show the shop UI when the player selects buy. So let's go to Unity, assign all the references and test. So first we need to assign the shop UI script to the shop UI game object. And then we need to assign all these references. Okay. So let me assign the item list first. And then I'll assign the up arrow and down arrow. Okay. So next I'll assign the item icon and the item description text. So finally, we should also assign the item slot UI prefab. So we can find that under game under UI folder. Okay. So let me assign it over here. So all those references are assigned. So next, I'll actually place the shop UI right below the inventory UI. The order doesn't really matter, but I want this to be above the dialog box, choice box, and all that. So next, we need to assign a reference to the shop UI in the shop controller script. So let me assign that. All right, and by the way, I'll make the shop UI 
disable it by default all right we don't want to show it by default so next we need to set up the available items that the merchant can sell so the merchant is in the house one scene all right so here we need to assign the available items so let me just get the items from game resources items okay i'll assign some simple items like potion super potion max potion let me just speed up this process and i'll also assign a few pokeball items so that we'll be able to buy pokeballs okay that should be enough so now let's go to the gameplay scene and test if this is working all right so let's go to the merchant and try to buy items okay so here you can see that it's showing the shop ui correctly but we can't change the selection by pressing the up and down arrow keys so that's because we missed to do something so in the shop controller script if the state is buying then we have to call shop ui dot handle update right so here let me just add an else condition okay and i'll check if the shop state is buying and if it's buying then we can call shop ui dot handle update okay so now we should be able to update the selection from the shop ui so let's go ahead and test okay so now you can see that we can update the selection in the shop ui and the item list is also scrolling correctly all right so that's working fine so next we should actually buy the item when the player selects an item and presses it all right so we'll be doing that in the next video so i'll stop the video here if you think these videos are helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so i'll see you in the next video